So we are talking about circles. If you notice, if you're looking like in terms of like our chapters, we are skipping a chapter for right now. Um, I'm going to come back to it. Um, if we have time, this one's a little bit more important in terms of like things like the ACT um, kind of placement testing and stuff like that. So um, this would be a good one to, for us to go through regardless. So, um, so we're skipping ahead to chapter 10. Like I said, we'll probably come back to chapter 9 towards the end of the, the year. Um, so they have a triangle here. They say what type of triangle is uh, formed by these locations. And even though it's like it's supposed to be like a map, they're talking about angle measures, and we're still talking about a triangle. So like you're talking about um, the distance between them we usually look at, but they're talking about the angles between those um, those cities. And so the third angle we should be able to figure out based off of um, our rules for triangles if they add up to 180. So if we have 25 and 57, what's that third angle then? Can you just figure it out? 98. 98. You guys are kind of scaring me here. These together add to 82, but then you have to take it away from 180, right? So 98. So since it's um, more than 90 degrees, we know obviously it's not right, it's not equal angles, it's not acute because if we have one obtuse angle, it automatically makes it an obtuse triangle. Okay. So in something like, um, like so again, and you guys have, were asked, talking about ACT a little bit earlier today, I heard, um, but in terms of the ACT, questions like this are kind of questions that the ACT likes is that it's trying to get you guys to know kind of more than one fact. Can you find that angle? And then do you know something about that type of triangle? So um, there's like different pieces to like ACT questions. They're usually not just one straightforward thing they're asking for. So you want to make sure you're looking for exactly what they're um, asking you to find. Um, so our next one here is simplifying, and this goes back to algebra. We have x minus 5, the quantity squared. So this is something that we learned last year, um, but it might have been a little bit rusty because you probably haven't seen it for a while. Does anyone remember what we have to do with this? How would I simplify this? Yeah. No, it's okay. How would we simplify this? Um, they want to remember. Yeah, Luca? Uh, x squared negative minus 10x plus 25. Okay, you're right about that. How would you explain that to someone? How did you get that? Okay, uh, so x to two, like the, the if x and 5, they, they multiply by themselves. Okay, so let's stop there for a second. So what Luca was pointing out is that when something's squared, it's being multiplied by itself. So we're writing x minus 5 twice. And um, I'll show you guys something in a second if you try to do something different with this. But when you square something, it means multiply it by itself. Once we get to this point, then we do something we call FOIL. Um, my algebra students are learning FOIL today. So it's something you probably learned almost a full calendar year ago, potentially. Um, so when we do that, we multiply the first term together. So x times x is x squared. The outer, you guys remember this, outer is x times negative 5, so that's a negative 5x. Inner, that's also a negative 5x. And then last, that's a positive 25. And I know this is something you guys learned last year because the majority of you guys, I taught it to you, so I know it's like something we learned. Um, and then what we do then is those middle two terms are alike, so we get to put those together. And 5 and 5 is 10, but it's going to be negative because they're both negative. And I might have showed you guys this, we called it the dead puppy theorem. Does anyone remember that? 
the radius is the center to the edge, or the point of the circle. Does anyone want to give me another radius? There should be another, there's, there's two other radius we can use in this circle. C what? CD. CD would also be a radius. If I look at just that half of it, that would also be a radius. What's our other one? Carson? CF. Now, HG is not a radius because HG doesn't go to the center of the circle. Make sure you guys are following along with us, please. The next one is the diameter. And that one goes all the way across the circle. And so the diameter is DF. Again, I don't know why these are changing colors on me. So DF is our diameter all the way across. It goes through the center, but the endpoints end on the circle, so it goes all the way across the circle. circle. So congruent circles are equal circles. Now radii is the plural of radius. say radiuses. 
So equal circles have the same length of radii or diameter. So if I say they both have a radius of five, they're going to look exactly the same. There's not like a unique looking circle that way. So just getting used to something like this looks like I have a bunch of bubbles on the next sheet here. Um, just kind of talking about some different things that we need to know about circles here. So looking at this drawing, um, we're going to find these different lengths. So why don't you guys take a minute to try this. So um, finding the radius of circle D. And circle D, if it's not clear, um, D should be the one that, again, D is the middle of the circle. So D is the smaller of the circle, whereas C is the larger because that's the middle of the larger circle, if that makes sense. So they're asking for the radius and diameter of these. I'm going to take attendance quick. Circle D, what'd you guys get? Two. two. And it, on a, like, if it's on a graph like this, it should be pretty easy to find. It's not meant to be super difficult. So D would be this circle. And so the radius is just any of these distances. So I'm just basically counting, I can go up two. So the circle, the radius of the circle would just be two. Whoops, what? Radius. And we just say like two units, we don't know if it's like inches, it's squares, whatever it happens to be, bless you. Now, if I told you that, you wouldn't even need to see it on the graph, but the diameter of circle D then would be what? Four. It's always going to be double. So this one's going to be four. This is just because this would be two and then this would be two here as well. So all the way across would be four. Um, and so again, the radius is the same throughout the same circle. And then the radius of circle C, so the C is the bigger of the two circles. So that's this one. Now just be careful to know you can't go diagonally, so I can't try to count that way. I'm just going to go like straight up or straight out or straight down. And so the radius of this one would be 3, so the diameter would be 6 if they asked for that. Okay. So just getting comfortable with just the idea of circles, I don't think this is overly crazy, but at the same time, if you're not like being detailed with it, it can be tough. The next thing they're going to talk to us about is the point of intersections. And what they mean by that is because circles can intersect a couple, like a few different ways. Basically, these are the four possibilities we have. So two circles can intersect in two spots. So this has two points of intersection, so it's where they're crossing. They could intersect at only <coughs> one spot. So although that kind of looks like it kind of runs along together for a while, we assume it really only intersects in one particular spot. Same thing here. So we assume it's just connected at like one dot like where you put the glue. But then we also have concentric circles that they never intersect. So they share a center. So 
So if they share a center, it's okay to say that they just don't intersect. Or you could also have, like you could say, like this circle and that one doesn't intersect either, obviously. There could just be circles that don't cross. Like it's okay for that to be the case. All right, the next, we're gonna do three more vocabulary words and then we'll take a break. Um, so a lot of vocabulary that I'm gonna to refer to all chapters. So um, I guess it's really only two more vocabulary words. So the next one is called a secant line. So we're gonna draw this in. So a secant line, My board's having being picky with me. It's like thinking. Stop thinking. So, our AB is a secant line. So, a secant line is kind of like a chord. So, like, we could say AB is a chord, and I probably should make this a line, sorry. So a secant line, it intersects the circle two times, but then it keeps going. tangent lines, like I said, before we take a little break here um, and do some examples with this. So multiple circles can have common tangent lines. So to show you guys this, on these two circles, so if I had a line, I'm going to try to draw it as best I can. I might mess it up, but we'll kind of hope that it, kind of pretend that that is perfect here. It should only hit these circles one time. So these would be common tangent lines. So this would be a common one. Oh, it keeps doing that. Stop doing that. Go 
this way as well. So that means it's tangent to both circles. of things that can kind of show up, what it looks like. You can also have a common tangent line like in the middle as well. I can get that to go through the center there. 